Welcome into the Fun Astrology Podcast. I know, I know, Thomas Miller here. I'm not supposed to be here today, but I am. <laughs> I couldn't, you know me. I will take time off this week, I promise, but something came up that I wanted to address today because I didn't want to leave this loop open, actually. So back on the 22nd, we talked about the nodes of the moon changing signs, and they did. And if you look on a chart today, you might see that the nodes are still in Sagittarius and Gemini, and they are. So what's going on? Who broke the nodes? <laughs> the nodes are just fine. Here is what's going on. And you may have noticed this and might have been confused by it, but there are two ways that you can calculate the nodes of the moon. So we have to take a step back again and to identify what the nodes of the moon are. So let's visualize the Earth in space. And the Earth and every other planet basically revolves around this, what's called the ecliptic line. See, magically, millions and billions and trillions and gazillions of years ago, when the Earth was created, <laughs> however it was created, all of our, the planets in our solar system just magically fell into the same orbit, the same circle around the sun. That's called the ecliptic line. All the planets dance around the sun with the same symmetry. This stuff is beautiful, I know. It really is touchingly beautiful to think of that. Likewise, the moon orbits the Earth. So the moon is orbiting us while we are following the ecliptic. So the moon's orbit around the Earth is tilted basically five degrees from the ecliptic. So here we are dancing around the sun. The moon is dancing around us five degrees separated from the bigger orbit, from the bigger dance. And the moon does not follow a straight line any more than we do. So it's kind of wobbling around us and has this trajectory where twice a year it crosses the ecliptic line. Those two points where the moon crosses the ecliptic twice a year are the nodes of the moon. So that's where we say is there's no body in the out, outer space that is a node. It's a point. It's an intersection point between the ecliptic and the orbit of the moon. And that actual path, the way it actually is, is calculated in your chart software as the true node of the moon, the true node calculation. Now, another thing is you hear how the nodes are always in retrograde, right? You've heard that. Well, not in the true node calculation. They are dancing, and a couple of times a month, a couple of days a month, they are actually in forward direct motion. If you look on your birth chart and you see the nodes not in retrograde and you say, what's going on? True node calculation. That's exactly the way it is. It's set up that way. And you caught one of those days. So what they did is they came in and mathematically smoothed that motion out and took an average of it or a mean, M-E-A-N, and that's the other calculation, the mean nodal calculation. In other words, it's a smoothed average. Typically, the two will vary by degree up to around two to two and a half degrees apart. And they dance. Right now, the mean node calculation is ahead of the true node calculation by about one degree, 24 minutes. Currently, the true node is, uh, now this is as of yesterday when I took the calculation, still in Sagittarius at one degree, nine minutes, while the mean node was at 29 degrees, 45 minutes in Sagittarius. That's a separation of about 1 degree, 24 minutes. So now I know I can hear you begging the question, so which one do you use? Which one is correct? <laughs> and you know the answer. They both are. So the true node obviously is the mark and place and time where it is right now and exactly the movement that it is moving. The mean is more smoothed. Now here is where I'm going to divert to experience. Steve Forrest, you know, since I've been narrating these audiobooks uses only the mean node. And in this book that I'm finishing this week, The Endless Sky, he did an essay in there about the mean node and why and how over 50 years of doing this, thousands, tens of thousands of looking at charts through the eyes of the soul's journey. And you look at all the different aspects, elements, 
and then you factor in the solar arcs and the progressions, somebody with 50 years' experience, who is one of the premier astrologers in the world today, uses the mean node system. So for me, I'm going to tuck under that belt of experience. And the reason I am is obviously I'll be proving it up to myself over many, many more encounters with readings in the future. But remember that astrology is something that gets handed down. It's something that is passed on. When they tried to obliterate it in the Middle Ages there and those years after, it lost some of that. So we've had to be recreating it over the last hundred years. And some of these astrologers who are more contemporary masters, if you will, are the ones that we're following today. And Steve is definitely in that category. Now, I've seen other areas where people say, oh, no, just use it where it is. It's exactly where it's supposed to be, and that's the one that you should use. I've also seen to use the mean nodes for personal interpretations and the true nodes for mundane or corporate or countrywide interpretations. I don't know. Something to take a look at. My charts stay in the mean node system, and that's why we announced here that the 22nd was the change of the sign, what I didn't mention back then, and sorry for the confusion, was that that was in the mean node setting. You set it to the true nodes, and that will take place on January 18th at 1.49 p.m. Eastern Time. And you know, I'm going to be playing with this since we brought it up and making a note in my January calendar that we'll take a look at uh, the corporate area and see if that energy, I mean, I've heard from a lot of you enough on the personal level to say the mean nodes changed signs <laughs> on the 22nd let's see what happens corporately that will be an interesting discussion so i'll be marking on the 18th you do the same and we'll compare notes how about that thanks for listening i hope i'm taking tomorrow off but not guaranteeing it we'll try have a great day